book thirteen of the iliad by homer translated by alexander pope this librivox recording is in the public domain book thirteen argument the fourth battle continued in which neptune assists the greeks the acts of idomeneus neptune concerned for the loss of the grecians upon seeing the fortification forced by hector who had entered the gate near the station of the ajaces assumes the shape of calchas and inspires those heroes to oppose him then in the form of one of the generals encourages the other greeks who had retired to their vessels the ajaces form their troops in a close phalanx and put a stop to hector and the trojans several deeds of valour are performed meriones losing his spear in the encounter repairs to seek another at the tent of idomeneus this occasions a conversation between those two warriors who return together to the battle idomeneus signalizes his courage above the rest he kills othryoneus osius and alcathous deiphobus and aeneas march against him and at length idomeneus retires menelaus wounds helenus and kills pisander the trojans are repulsed on the left wing hector still keeps his ground against the ajaces till being galled by the locrians slingers and archers polydamus advises to call a council of war hector approves of his advice but goes first to rally the trojans upbraids paris rejoins polydamus meets ajax again and renews the attack the eight and twentieth day still continues the scene is between the grecian wall and the seashore when now the thunderer on the sea-beat coast had fixed great hector and his conquering host he left them to the fates in bloody fray to toil and struggle through the well-fought day then turned to thracia from the field of fight those eyes that shed insufferable light to where the mycians prove their martial force and hardy thracians tame the savage horse and where the far-famed hippomogion strays renowned for justice and for length of days thrice happy race that innocent of blood from milk innoxious seek their simple food jove sees delighted and avoids the scene of guilty troy of arms and dying men no aid he deems to either host is given while his high law suspends the powers of heaven meantime the monarch of the watery main observed the thunderer nor observed in vain in samothracia on a mountain's brow whose waving woods o'erhung the deeps below he sat and round him cast his azure eyes where ida's misty tops confusedly rise below fair aelian's glittering spires were seen the crowded ships and sable seas between there from the crystal chambers of the main emerged he sat and mourned his argive slain at jove incensed with grief and fury stung prone down the rocky steep he rushed along fierce as he passed the lofty mountains nod the forest shakes earth trembled as he trod and felt the footsteps of the immortal god from realm to realm three ample strides he took and at the fourth the distant age shook far in the bay his shining palace stands eternal frame not raised by mortal hands this having reached his brass-hoofed steeds he reins fleet as the winds and decked with golden manes refulgent arms his mighty limbs enfold immortal arms of adamant and gold he mounts the car the golden scourge applies he sits superior and the chariot flies his whirling wheels the glassy surface sweep the enormous monsters rolling o'er the deep gambol around him on the watery way and heavy whales in awkward measures play the sea subsiding spreads a level plain exults and owns the monarch of the main the parting waves before his coursers fly the wondering waters leave his axle dry deep in the liquid regions lies a cave between where tenedos the surges lave and rocky imbrus breaks the rolling wave there the great ruler of the azure round stopped his swift chariot and his steeds unbound fed with ambrosial herbage from his hand and linked their fetlocks with a golden band infrangible immortal there they stay the father of the floods pursues his way where like a tempest darkening heaven around or fiery deluge that devours the ground the impatient trojans in a gloomy throng embattled rolled as hector rushed along to the loud tumult and the barbarous cry the heavens re-echo and the shores reply 
they vow destruction to the grecian name and in their hopes the fleets already flame but neptune rising from the seas profound the god whose earthquakes rock the solid ground now wears a mortal form like calchas seen such his loud voice and such his manly mien his shouts incessant every greek inspire but most the ajaces adding fire to fire tis yours o warriors all our hopes to raise oh recollect your ancient worth and praise tis yours to save us if you cease to fear flight more than shameful is destructive here on other works though troy with fury fall and pour her armies o'er our battered wall there greece has strength but this this part o'erthrown her strength were vain i dread for you alone here hector rages like the force of fire vaunts of his gods and calls high jove his sire if yet some heavenly power your breast excite breathe in your hearts and string your arms to fight greece yet may live her threatened fleet maintain and hector's force and jove's own aid be vain then with his sceptre that the deep controls he touched the chiefs and steeled their manly souls strength not their own the touch divine imparts prompts their light limbs and swells their daring hearts then as a falcon from the rocky height her quarry seen impetuous at the sight forth springing instant darts herself from high shoots on the wing and skims along the sky such and so swift the power of ocean flew the wide horizon shut him from their view the inspiring god oileus active son perceived the first and thus to telamon some god my friend some god in human form favouring descends and wills to stand the storm not calchas this the venerable seer short as he turned i saw the power appear i marked his parting and the steps he trod his own bright evidence reveals a god even now some energy divine i share and seem to walk on wings and tread in air with equal ardour telamon returns my soul is kindled and my bosom burns new rising spirits all my force alarm lift each impatient limb and brace my arm this ready arm unthinking shakes the dart the blood pours back and fortifies my heart singly methinks yon towering chief i meet and stretch the dreadful hector at my feet full of the god that urged their burning breast the heroes thus their mutual warmth expressed neptune meanwhile the routed greeks inspired who breathless pale with length of labours tired pant in the ships while troy to conquest calls and swarms victorious o'er their yielding walls trembling before the impending storm they lie while tears of rage stand burning in their eye greece sunk they thought and this their fatal hour but breathe new courage as they feel the power teucer and laetus first his words excite then stern peneleus rises to the fight thoas deipyrus in arms renowned and merion next the impulsive fury found last nestor's son the same bold ardour takes while thus the god the martial fire awakes o oh, lasting infamy o oh, dire disgrace to chiefs of vigorous youth and manly race i trusted in the gods and you to see brave greece victorious and her navy free ah no the glorious combat you disclaim and one black day clouds all her former fame heavens what a prodigy these eyes survey unseen unthought till this amazing day fly we at length from troy's oft conquered bands and falls our fleet by such inglorious hands a rout undisciplined a straggling train not born to glories of the dusty plain like frighted fawns from hill to hill pursued a prey to every savage of the wood shall these so late who trembled at your name invade your camps involve your ships in flame a change so shameful say what cause has wrought the soldier's baseness or the general's fault fools will ye perish for your leader's vice the purchase infamy and life the price tis not your cause achilles injured fame another's is the crime but yours the shame grant that our chief offend through rage or lust must you be cowards if your king's unjust prevent this evil and your country save small thought retrieves the spirits of the brave think and subdue on dastards dead to fame i waste no anger for they feel no shame but you the pride the flower of all our host 
my heart weeps blood to see your glory lost nor deem this day this battle all you lose a day more black a fate more vile ensues let each reflect who prizes fame or breath on endless infamy on instant death for lo the fated time the appointed shore hark the gates burst the brazen barriers roar impetuous hector thunders at the wall the hour the spot to conquer or to fall these words the grecians fainting hearts inspire and listening armies catch the godlike fire fixed at his post was each bold ajax found with well-ranged squadrons strongly circled round so close their order so disposed their fight as pallas self might view with fixed delight or had the god of war inclined his eyes the god of war had owned a just surprise a chosen phalanx firm resolved as fate descending hector and his battle weight an iron scene gleams dreadful o'er the fields armor in armor locked and shields in shields spears lean on spears on targets targets throng helms stuck to helms and man drove man along the floating plumes unnumbered wave above as when an earthquake stirs the nodding grove and levelled at the skies with pointing rays their brandished lances at each motion blaze thus breathing death in terrible array the close compacted legions urged their way fierce they drove on impatient to destroy troy charged the first and hector first of troy as from some mountain's craggy forehead torn a rock's round fragment flies with fury borne which from the stubborn stone a torrent rends precipitate the ponderous mass descends from steep to steep the rolling ruin bounds at every shock the crackling wood resounds still gathering force it smokes and urged amain whirls leaps and thunders down impetuous to the plain there stops so hector their whole force he proved resistless when he raged and when he stopped unmoved on him the war is bent the darts are shed and all their falchions wave around his head repulsed he stands nor from his stand retires but with repeated shouts his army fires trojans be firm this arm shall make your way through yon square body and that black array stand and my spear shall rout their scattering power strong as they seem embattled like a tower for he that juno's heavenly bosom warms the first of gods this day inspires our arms he said and roused the soul in every breast urged with desire of fame beyond the rest forth marched deiphobus but marching held before his wary steps his ample shield bold merion aimed a stroke nor aimed it wide the glittering javelin pierced the tough bull-hide but pierced not through unfaithful to his hand the point broke short and sparkled in the sand the trojan warrior touched with timely fear on the raised orb to distance bore the spear the greek retreating mourned his frustrate blow and cursed the treacherous lance that spared a foe then to the ships with surly speed he went to seek a surer javelin in his tent meanwhile with rising rage the battle glows the tumult thickens and the clamour grows by teucer's arm the warlike imbrius bleeds the son of mentor rich in generous steeds ere yet to troy the sons of greece were led in fair pedias verdant pastures bred the youth had dwelt remote from war's alarms and blessed in bright medisa casti's arms this nymph the fruit of priam's ravished joy allied the warrior to the house of troy to troy when glory called his arms he came and matched the bravest of her chiefs in fame with priam's sons a guardian of the throne he lived beloved and honoured as his own him teucer pierced between the throat and ear he groans beneath the telamonian spear as from some far-seen mountain's airy crown subdued by steel a tall ash tumbles down and soils its verdant tresses on the ground so falls the youth his arms the fall resound then teucer rushing to despoil the dead from hector's hand a shining javelin fled he saw and shunned the death the forceful dart sung on and pierced amphimachus's heart teatus son of neptune's forceful line vain was his courage and his race divine 
prostrate he falls his clanging arms resound and his broad buckler thunders on the ground to seize his beamy helm the victor flies and just had fastened on the dazzling prize when ajax manly arm a javelin flung full on the shield's round boss the weapon rung he felt the shock nor more was doomed to feel secure in mail and sheathed in shining steel repulsed he yields the victor greeks obtain the spoils contested and bear off the slain between the leaders of the athenian line stichius the brave menestheus the divine deplored amphimachus sad object lies imbrius remains the fierce ajaces prize as two grim lions bear across the lawn snatched from devouring hounds a slaughtered fawn in their fell jaws high lifting through the wood and sprinkling all the shrubs with drops of blood so these the chief great ajax from the dead strips his bright arms o ilius lops his head tossed like a ball and whirled in air away at hector's feet the gory visage lay the god of ocean fired with stern disdain and pierced with sorrow for his grandson slain inspires the grecian hearts confirms their hands and breathes destruction on the trojan bands swift as a whirlwind rushing to the fleet he finds the lance-famed idomen of crete his pensive brow the generous care expressed with which a wounded soldier touched his breast whom in the chance of war a javelin tore and his sad comrades from the battle bore him to the surgeons of the camp he sent that office paid he issued from his tent fierce for the fight to whom the god begun in thoas voice andremon's valiant son who ruled where calydon's white rocks arise and pleuron's chalky cliffs emblaze the skies where's now the imperious vaunt the daring boast of greece victorious and proud ilion lost to whom the king on greece no blame be thrown arms are her trade and war is all her own her hardy heroes from the well-fought plains nor fear withholds nor shameful sloth detains tis heaven alas and jove's all-powerful doom that far far distant from our native home wills us to fall inglorious o oh, my friend once foremost in the fight still prone to lend or arms or counsels now perform thy best and what thou canst not singly urge the rest thus he and thus the god whose force can make the solid globe's eternal basis shake ah never may he see his native land but feed the vultures on this hateful strand who seeks ignobly in his ships to stay nor dares to combat on this signal day for this behold in horrid arms i shine and urge thy soul to rival acts with mine together let us battle on the plain two not the worst nor even this succour vain not vain the weakest if their force unite but ours the bravest have confessed in fight this said he rushes where the combat burns swift to his tent the cretan king returns from thence two javelins glittering in his hand and clad in arms that lightened all the strand fierce on the foe the impetuous hero drove like lightning bursting from the arm of jove which to pale man the wrath of heaven declares or terrifies the offending world with wars in streamy sparkles kindling all the skies from pole to pole the trail of glory flies thus his bright armour o'er the dazzled throng gleamed dreadful as the monarch flashed along him near his tent meriones attends whom thus he questions ever best of friends o oh say in every art of battle skilled what holds thy courage from so brave a field on some important message art thou bound or bleeds my friend by some unhappy wound inglorious here my soul abhors to stay and glows with prospects of the approaching day o prince meriones replies whose care leads forth the embattled sons of crete to war this speaks my grief this headless lance i wield the rest lies rooted in a trojan shield to whom the cretan enter and receive the wonted weapons those my tent can give spears i have store and trojan lances all that shed a lustre round the illumined wall though i disdainful of the distant war nor trust the dart nor aim the uncertain spear yet hand to hand i fight and spoil the slain and thence these trophies and these arms i gain enter and see on heaps the helmets rolled and high-hung spears and shields that flame with gold nor vain said merion are our martial toils we too can boast of no ignoble spoils 
but those my ship contains whence distant far i fight conspicuous in the van of war what need i more if any greek there be who knows not morion i appeal to thee to this idomeneus the fields of fight have proved thy valour and unconquered might and were some ambush for the foes designed even there thy courage would not lag behind in that sharp service singled from the rest the fear of each or valour stands confessed no force no firmness the pale coward shows he shifts his place his colour comes and goes a dropping sweat creeps cold on every part against his bosom beats his quivering heart terror and death in his wild eyeballs stare with chattering teeth he stands and stiffening hair and looks a bloodless image of despair not so the brave still dauntless still the same unchanged his colour and unmoved his frame composed his thought determined is his eye and fixed his soul to conquer or to die if aught disturb the tenor of his breast tis but the wish to strike before the rest in such essays thy blameless worth is known and every art of dangerous war thy own by chance of fight whatever wounds you bore those wounds were glorious all and all before such as may teach twas still thy brave delight to oppose thy bosom where thy foremost fight but why like infants cold to honour's charms stand we to talk when glory calls to arms go from my conquered spears the choicest take and to their owners send them nobly back swift at the word bold morion snatched a spear and breathing slaughter followed to the war so mars armipotent invades the plain the wide destroyer of the race of man terror his best beloved son attends his course armed with stern boldness and enormous force the pride of haughty warriors to confound and lay the strength of tyrants on the ground from thrace they fly called to the dire alarms of warring phlegians and ephorian arms invoked by both relentless they dispose to these glad conquest murderous rout to those so marched the leaders of the cretan train and their bright arms shot horror o'er the plain then first spake morion shall we join the right or combat in the centre of the fight or to the left our wonted succour lend hazard and fame all parts alike attend not in the centre idomen replied our ablest chieftains the main battle guide each godlike ajax makes that post his care and gallant teucer deals destruction there skilled or with shafts to gall the distant field or bear close battle on the sounding shield these can the rage of haughty hector tame safe in their arms the navy fears no flame till jove himself descends his bolts to shed and hurl the blazing ruin at our head great must he be of more than human birth nor feed like mortals on the fruits of earth him neither rocks can crush nor steel can wound whom ajax fells not on the ensanguined ground in standing fight he mates achilles force excelled alone in swiftness in the course then to the left our ready arms apply and live with glory or with glory die he said and morion to the appointed place fierce as the god of battles urged his pace soon as the foe the shining chiefs beheld rush like a fiery torrent o'er the field their force embodied in a tide they pour the rising combat sounds along the shore as warring winds in serious sultry rain from different quarters sweep the sandy plain on every side the dusty whirlwinds rise and the dry fields are lifted to the skies thus by despair hope rage together driven met the black hosts and meeting darkened heaven all dreadful glared the iron face of war bristled with upright spears that flashed afar dire was the gleam of breastplates helms and shields and polished arms emblazed the flaming fields tremendous scene that general horror gave but touched with joy the bosoms of the brave saturn's great sons in fierce contention vied and crowds of heroes in their anger died the sire of earth and heaven by thetis won to crown with glory peleus godlike son willed not destruction to the grecian powers but spared awhile the destined trojan towers while neptune rising from his azure main warred on the king of heaven with stern disdain and breathed revenge and fired the grecian train 
gods of one source of one ethereal race alike divine and heaven their native place but jove the greater first born of the skies and more than men or gods supremely wise for this of jove's superior might afraid neptune in human form concealed his aid these powers enfold the greek and trojan train in war and discord's adamantine chain indissolubly strong the fatal tie is stretched on both and close compelled they die dreadful in arms and grown in combats gray the bold idomeneus controls the day first by his hand othryoneus was slain swelled with false hopes with mad ambition vain called by the voice of war to martial fame from high cabesus distant walls he came cassandra's love he sought with boasts of power and promised conquest was the proffered dower the king consented by his vaunts abused the king consented but the fates refused proud of himself and of the imagined bride the field he measured with a larger stride him as he stalked the cretan javelin found vain was his breastplate to repel the wound his dream of glory lost he plunged to hell his arms resounded as the boaster fell the great idomeneus bestrides the dead and thus he cries behold thy promise sped such is the help thy arms to ilion bring and such the contract of the phrygian king our offers now illustrious prince receive for such an aid what will not argos give to conquer troy with ours thy forces join and count atrides fairest daughter thine meantime on further methods to advise come follow to the fleet thy new allies there hear what greece has on her part to say he spoke and dragged the gory course away this asius viewed unable to contain before his chariot warring on the plain his crowded coursers to his squire consigned impatient panted on his neck behind to vengeance rising with a sudden spring he hoped the conquest of the cretan king the wary cretan as his foe drew near full on his throat discharged the forceful spear beneath the chin the point was seen to glide and glittered extant at the further side as when the mountain oak or poplar tall or pine fit mast for some great admiral groans to the oft-heaved axe with many a wound then spreads a length of ruin o'er the ground so sunk proud asius in that dreadful day and stretched before his much-loved coursers lay he grinds the dust disdained with streaming gore and fierce in death lies foaming on the shore deprived of motion stiff with stupid fear stands all aghast his trembling charioteer nor shuns the foe nor turns the steeds away but falls transfixed an unresisting prey pierced by antilochus he pants beneath the stately car and labours out his breath thus asius steeds their mighty master gone remain the prize of nestor's youthful son stabbed at the sight the ephobus drew nigh and made with force the vengeful weapon fly the cretan saw and stooping caused to glance from his slope shield the disappointed lance beneath the spacious targe a blazing round thick with bull hides and brazen orbits bound on his raised arm by two strong braces stayed he lay collected in defensive shade o'er his safe head the javelin idly sung and on the tinkling verge more faintly rung even then the spear the vigorous arm confessed and pierced obliquely king hepsenor's breast warmed in his liver to the ground it bore the chief his people's guardian now no more not unattended the proud trojan cries nor unrevenged lamented asius lies for thee through hell's black portals stand displayed this mate shall joy thy melancholy shade heart-piercing anguish at the haughty boast touched every greek but nestor's son the most grieved as he was his pious arms attend and his broad buckler shields his slaughtered friend till sad mecistus and alastor bore his honoured body to the tented shore nor yet from fight idomeneus withdraws resolved to perish in his country's cause or find some foe whom heaven and he shall doom to wail his fate in death's eternal gloom he sees alcathous in the front aspire great Esaites was the hero's sire his spouse epitomia divinely fair anchises eldest hope and darling care who charmed her parents and her husband's heart with beauty sense 
and every work of art he once of ilion's youth the loveliest boy the fairest she of all the fair of troy by neptune now the hapless hero dies who covers with a cloud those beauteous eyes and fetters every limb yet bent to meet his fate he stands nor shuns the lance of crete fixed as some column or deep-rooted oak while the winds sleep his breast received the stroke before the ponderous stroke his corslet yields long used toward the death in fighting fields the riven armour sends a jarring sound his labouring heart heaves with so strong a bound the long lance shakes and vibrates in the wound fast flowing from its source as prone he lay life's purple tide impetuous gushed away then idomen insulting o'er the slain behold deiphobus nor vaunt in vain see on one greek three trojan ghosts attend this my third victim to the shades i send approaching now thy boasted might approve and try the prowess of the seed of jove from jove enamoured of a mortal dame great minos guardian of his country came deucalion blameless prince was minos heir his first-born i the third from jupiter o'er spacious crete and her bold sons i reign and thence my ships transport me through the main lord of a host o'er all my host i shine a scourge to thee thy father and thy line the trojan heard uncertain or to meet alone with venturous arms the king of crete or seek auxiliar force at length decreed to call some hero to partake the deed forthwith aeneas rises to his thought for him in troy's remotest lines he sought where he incensed at partial priam stands and sees superior posts in meaner hands to him ambitious of so great an aid the bold deiphobus approached and said now trojan prince employ thy pious arms if e'er thy bosom felt fair honour's charms alcathous dies thy brother and thy friend come and the warrior's loved remains defend beneath his cares thy early youth was trained one table fed you and one roof contained this deed to fierce idomeneus we owe haste and revenge it on the insulting foe aeneas heard and for a space resigned to tender pity all his manly mind then rising in his rage he burns to fight the greek awaits him with collected might as the fell boar on some rough mountain's head armed with wild terrors and do slaughter bred when the loud rustics rise and shout from far attends the tumult and expects the war o'er his bent back the bristly horrors rise fires stream in lightning from his sanguine eyes his foaming tusks both dogs and men engage but most his hunters rouse his mighty rage so stood idomeneus his javelin shook and met the trojan with a lowering look antilochus deiperus were near the youthful offspring of the god of war merion and apharius in field renowned to these the warrior sent his voice around fellows in arms your timely aid unite lo great aeneas rushes to the fight sprung from a god and more than mortal bold he fresh in youth and i in arms grown old else should this hand this hour decide the strife the great dispute of glory or of life he spoke and all as with one soul obeyed their lifted bucklers cast a dreadful shade around the chief aeneas too demands the assisting forces of his native bands paris deiphobus agenor join co-aids and captains of the trojan line in order follow all the embodied train like ida's flocks proceeding o'er the plain before his fleecy care erect and bold stalks the proud ram the father of the bold with joy the swain surveys them as he leads to the cool fountains through the well-known meads so joys aeneas as his native band moves on in rank and stretches o'er the land round dread alcathous now the battle rose on every side the steely circle grows now battered breastplates and hacked helmets ring and o'er their heads unheeded javelins sing above the rest two towering chiefs appear there great idomeneus aeneas here like gods of war dispensing fate they stood and burned to drench the ground with mutual blood the trojan weapon whizzed along in air the cretan saw and shunned the brazen spear 
sent from an arm so strong the missive wood stuck deep in earth and quivered where it stood but enomaeus received the cretan stroke the forceful spear his hollow corslet broke it ripped his belly with a ghastly wound and rolled the smoking entrails on the ground stretched on the plain he sobs away his breath and furious grasps the bloody dust in death the victor from his breast the weapon tears his spoils he could not for the shower of spears though now unfit an active war to wage heavy with cumbrous arms stiff with cold age his listless limbs unable for the course in standing fight he yet maintains his force till faint with labour and by foes repelled his tired slow steps he drags from off the field deiphobus beheld him as he passed and fired with hate a parting javelin cast the javelin erred but held its course along and pierced ascalaphus the brave and young the son of mars fell gasping on the ground and gnashed the dust all bloody with his wound nor knew the furious father of his fall high throned amidst the great olympian hall on golden clouds the immortal synod sate detained from bloody war by jove and fate now where in dust the breathless hero lay for slain ascalaphus commenced the fray deiphobus to seize his helmet flies and from his temples rends the glittering prize valiant as mars meriones drew near and on his loaded arm discharged his spear he drops the weight disabled with the pain the hollow helmet rings against the plain swift as a vulture leaping on his prey from his torn arm the grecian rent away the reeking javelin and rejoined his friends his wounded brother good polites tends around his waist his pious arms he threw and from the rage of battle gently drew him his swift coursers on his splendid car wrapped from the lessening thunder of the war to troy they drove him groaning from the shore and sprinkling as he passed the sands with gore meanwhile fresh slaughter bathes the sanguine ground heaps fall on heaps and heaven and earth resound bold Apharius by great aeneas bled as toward the chief he turned his daring head he pierced his throat the bending head depressed beneath his helmet nods upon his breast his shield reversed o'er the fallen warrior lies and everlasting slumber seals his eyes antilochus as though unturned him round transpierced his back with a dishonest wound the hollow vein that to the neck extends along the chin his eager javelin rends supine he falls and to his social train spreads his imploring arms but spreads in vain the exulting victor leaping where he lay from his broad shoulders tore the spoils away his time observed foreclosed by foes around on all sides thick the peals of arms resound his shield embossed the ringing storm sustains but he impervious and untouched remains great neptune's care preserved from hostile rage this youth the joy of nestor's glorious age in arms intrepid with the first he fought faced every foe and every danger sought his winged lance resistless as the wind obeys each motion of the master's mind restless it flies impatient to be free and meditates the distant enemy the son of asius adamus drew near and struck his target with the brazen spear fierce in his front but neptune wards the blow and blunts the javelin of the eluded foe in the broad buckler half the weapon stood splintered on earth flew half the broken wood disarmed he mingled in the trojan crew but merion's spear o'ertook him as he flew deep in the belly's rim an entrance found where sharp the pang and mortal is the wound bending he fell and doubled to the ground lay panting thus an ox in fetters tied while death's strong pangs distend his labouring side his bulk enormous on the field displays his heaving heart beats thick as ebbing life decays the spear the conqueror from his body drew and death's dim shadows swarm before his view next brave deiprus in dust was laid king helenus waved high the thracian blade and smote his temples with an arm so strong the helm fell off and rolled amid the throng there for some luckier greek it rests a prize for dark in death the godlike owner lies raging with grief great menelaus burns and fraught with vengeance to the victor turns that shook the ponderous lance in act to throw and this stood adverse with the bended bow 
full on his breast the trojan arrow fell but harmless bounded from the plated steel as on some ample barn's well-hardened floor the winds collected at each open door while the broad fan with force is whirled around light leaps the golden grain resulting from the ground so from the steel that guards atrides heart repelled to distance flies the bounding dart atrides watchful of the unwary foe pierced with his lance the hand that grasped the bow and nailed it to the yew the wounded hand trailed the long lance that marked with blood the sand but good agenor gently from the wound the spear solicits and the bandage bound a sling soft wool snatched from a soldier's side at once the tent and ligature supplied behold pisander urged by fate's decree springs through the ranks to fall and fall by thee great menelaus to enhance thy fame high towering in the front the warrior came first the sharp lance was by atrides thrown the lance far distant by the winds was blown nor pierced pisander through atrides shield pisander's spear fell shivered on the field not so discouraged to the future blind vain dreams of conquest swell his haughty mind dauntless he rushes where the spartan lord like lightning brandished his far beaming sword his left arm high opposed the shining shield his right beneath the covered pole-axe held an olive's cloudy grain the handle made distinct with studs and brazen was the blade this on the helm discharged a noble blow the plume dropped nodding to the plain below shorn from the crest atrides waved his steel deep through his front the weighty falchion fell the crashing bones before its force gave way in dust and blood the groaning hero lay forced from their ghastly orbs and spouting gore the clotted eyeballs tumble on the shore and fierce atrides spurned him as he bled tore off his arms and loud exulting said thus trojans thus at length be taught to fear o race perfidious who delight in war already noble deeds ye have performed a princess raped transcends a navy stormed in such bold feats your impious might approve without the assistance or the fear of jove the violated rites the ravished dame our heroes slaughtered and our ships on flame crimes heaped on crimes shall bend your glory down and whelm in ruins yon flagitious town o thou great father lord of earth and skies above the thought of man supremely wise if from thy hand the fates of mortals flow from whence this favour to an impious foe a godless crew abandoned and unjust still breathing rapine violence and lust the best of things beyond their measure cloy sleep's balmy blessing love's endearing joy the feast the dance what e'er mankind desire even the sweet charms of sacred numbers tire but troy for ever reaps a dire delight in thirst of slaughter and in lust of fight this said he seized while yet the carcass heaved the bloody armour which his train received then sudden mixed among the warring crew and the bold son of polymenes slew carpelian had through asia travelled far following his martial father to the war through filial love he left his native shore never ah never to behold it more his unsuccessful spear he chanced to fling against the target of the spartan king thus of his lance disarmed from death he flies and turns around his apprehensive eyes him through the hip transpiercing as he fled the shaft of merion mingled with the dead beneath the bone the glancing point descends and driving down the swelling bladder rends sunk in his sad companion's arms he lay and in short panting sobbed his soul away like some vile worm extended on the ground while life's red torrent gushed from out the wound him on his car the paphlagonian train in slow procession bore from off the plain the pensive father father now no more attends the mournful pomp along the shore and unavailing tears profusely shed and unrevenged deplored his offspring dead paris from far the moving sight beheld with pity softened and with fury swelled his honoured host a youth of matchless grace and loved of all the paphlagonian race with his full strength he bent his angry bow and winged the feathered vengeance at the foe a chief there was the brave eucinor named for riches much and more for virtue famed who held his seat in corinth's stately town 
polita's son a seer of old renown oft had the father told his early doom by arms abroad or slow disease at home he climbed his vessel prodigal of breath and chose the certain glorious path to death beneath his ear the pointed arrow went the soul came issuing at the narrow vent his limbs unnerved dropped useless on the ground and everlasting darkness shades him round nor knew great hector how his legions yield wrapped in the cloud and tumult of the field wide on the left the force of greece commands and conquest hovers o'er the achaean bands with such a tide superior virtue swayed and he that shakes the solid earth gave aid but in the centre hector fixed remained where first the gates were forced and bulwarks gained there on the margin of the hoary deep their naval station where the jaces keep and where low walls confine the beating tides whose humble barrier scarce the foe divides where late in fight both foot and horse engaged and all the thunder of the battle raged there joined the whole boeotian strength remains the proud ionians with their sweeping trains locrians and Pthians and the apian force but joined repel not hector's fiery course the flower of athens stichus phidus led bias and great menestheus at their head meges the strong the apian bands controlled and dracius prudent and amphion bold the Thians, medon famed for martial might and brave podarces active in the fight this drew from philicus his noble line iphiclus son and that o ilius thine young ajax brother by a stolen embrace he dwelt far distant from his native place by his fierce stepdame from his father's reign expelled and exiled for her brother slain these rule the Thians and their arms employ mixed with boeotians on the shores of troy now side by side with like unwearied care each ajax laboured through the field of war so when two lordly bulls with equal toil forced the bright ploughshare through the fallow soil joined to one yoke the stubborn earth they tear and trace large furrows with the shining share o'er their huge limbs the foam descends in snow and streams of sweat down their sour foreheads flow a train of heroes followed through the field who bore by turns great ajax sevenfold shield when e'er he breathed remissive of his might tired with the incessant slaughters of the fight no following troops his brave associate grace in close engagement an unpractised race the locrian squadrons nor the javelin wield nor bear the helm nor lift the moony shield but skilled from far the flying shaft to wing or whirl the sounding pebble from the sling dexterous with these they aim a certain wound or fell the distant warrior to the ground thus in the van the telamonian train thronged in bright arms a pressing fight maintain far in the rear the locrian archers lie whose stones and arrows intercept the sky the mingled tempest on the foes they pour troy scattering orders open to the shower now had the greeks eternal fame acquired and the galled ilians to their walls retired but sage polydamus discreetly brave addressed great hector and this counsel gave though great in all thou seem'st averse to lend impartial audience to a faithful friend to gods and men thy matchless worth is known and every art of glorious war thy own but in cool thought and counsel to excel how widely differs this from warring well content with what the bounteous gods have given seek not alone to engross the gifts of heaven to some the powers of bloody war belong to some sweet music and the charm of song to few and wondrous few has jove assigned a wise extensive all-considering mind their guardians these the nations round confess and towns and empires for their safety bless if heaven have lodged this virtue in my breast attend o hector what i judge the best see as thou mov'st on dangers dangers spread and war's whole fury burns around thy head behold distressed within yon hostile wall how many trojans yield disperse or fall what troops outnumbered scarce the war maintain and what brave heroes at the ships lie slain here cease thy fury and the chiefs and kings convoked in council weigh the sum of things whether the gods succeeding our desires to yon tall ships to bear the trojan fires or quit the fleet and pass unhurt away contented with the conquest of the day 
i fear i fear lest greece not yet undone pay the large debt of last revolving sun achilles great achilles yet remains on yonder decks and yet o'erlooks the plains the council pleased and hector with a bound leaped from his chariot on the trembling ground swift as he leaped his clanging arms resound to guard this post he cried thy art employ and here detain the scattered youth of troy where yonder heroes faint i bend my way and hasten back to end the doubtful day this said the towering chief prepares to go shakes his white plumes that to the breezes flow and seems a moving mountain topped with snow through all his host inspiring force he flies and bids anew the martial thunder rise to panthus son at hector's high command haste the bold leaders of the trojan band but round the battlements and round the plain for many a chief he looked but looked in vain deiphobus nor helenus the seer nor asius son nor asius self appear for these were pierced with many a ghastly wound some cold in death some groaning on the ground some low in dust a mournful object lay high on the wall some breathed their souls away far on the left amid the throng he found cheering the troops and dealing deaths around the graceful paris whom with fury moved opprobrious thus the impatient chief reproved ill-fated paris slave to womankind as smooth of face as fraudulent of mind where is deiphobus where asius gone the godlike father and the intrepid son the force of helenus dispensing fate and great othryoneus so feared of late black fate hangs o'er thee from the avenging gods imperial troy from her foundations nods whelmed in thy country's ruin shalt thou fall and one devouring vengeance swallow all when paris thus my brother and my friend thy warm impatience makes thy tongue offend in other battles i deserved thy blame though then not deedless nor unknown to fame but since yon rampart by thy arms lay low i scattered slaughter from my fatal bow the chiefs you seek on yonder shore lie slain of all those heroes two alone remain deiphobus and helenus the seer each now disabled by a hostile spear go then successful where thy soul inspires this heart and hand shall second all thy fires what with this arm i can prepare to know till death for death be paid and blow for blow but tis not ours with forces not our own to combat strength is of the gods alone these words the hero's angry mind assuage then fierce they mingle where the thickest rage around polydamus disdained with blood cebrion falses stern ortheus stood palmus with polypetes the divine and two bold brothers of hippotion's line who reached fair ilion from ascania far the former day the next engaged in war as when from gloomy clouds a whirlwind springs that bears jove's thunder on its dreadful wings wide o'er the blasted fields the tempest sweeps then gathered settles on the hoary deeps the afflicted deeps tumultuous mix and roar the waves behind impel the waves before wide rolling foaming high and tumbling to the shore thus rank on rank the thick battalions throng chief urged on chief and man drove man along far o'er the plains in dreadful order bright the brazen arms reflect a beamy light full in the blazing van great hector shined like mars commissioned to confound mankind before him flaming his enormous shield like the broad sun illumined all the field his nodding helm emits a streamy ray his piercing eyes through all the battle stray and while beneath his targe he flashed along shot terrors round that withered e'en the strong thus stalked he dreadful death was in his look whole nations feared but not an argive shook the towering ajax with an ample stride advanced the first and thus the chief defied hector come on thy empty threats forbear tis not thy arm tis thundering jove we fear the skill of war to us not idly given lo greece is humbled not by troy but heaven vain are the hopes that haughty mind imparts to force our fleet the greeks have hands and hearts long ere in flames our lofty navy fall your boasted city and your god-built wall shall sink beneath us smoking on the ground 
and spread a long unmeasured ruin round the time shall come when chased along the plain even thou shalt call on jove and call in vain even thou shalt wish to aid thy desperate course the wings of falcons for thy flying horse shalt run forgetful of a warrior's fame while clouds of friendly dust conceal thy shame as thus he spoke behold in open view on sounding wings a dexter eagle flew to jove's glad omen all the grecians rise and hail with shouts his progress through the skies far echoing clamours bound from side to side they ceased and thus the chief of troy replied from whence this menace this insulting strain enormous boaster doomed to vaunt in vain so may the gods on hector life bestow not that short life which mortals lead below but such as those of jove's high lineage born the blue-eyed maid or he that gilds the morn as this decisive day shall end the fame of greece and argos be no more a name and thou imperious if thy madness wait the lance of hector thou shalt meet thy fate that giant course extended on the shore shall largely feast the fowls with fat and gore he said and like a lion stalked along with shouts incessant earth and ocean rung sent from his following host the grecian train with answering thunders filled the echoing plain a shout that tore heaven's concave and above shook the fixed splendours of the throne of jove End of book thirteen.